So joining me on the Golf Ireland podcast this week, we have a very interesting guest and I'm really excited to chat to her, Kerry Marr. Kerry, first of all, welcome to the Golf Pod. Thank you. So glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, let's start by you're actually not at home at the moment, Kerry. Whereabouts are you? Just off the golf course. So I'm just off the golf course in Austria with a woman that I've met through my online golf classes that said, if you come to Europe and you don't come to my house, I'm not going to be very happy. And this woman is not just any woman. She's a um, transmental doctor whom I asked to help me teach the mental side of golf in my golf classes. And she is amazing. And uh, today I met a friend, a colleague, a woman from across the world that I was able to meet in my golf class and to stay at her home and go play golf with my mental doctor that helps women from all over the world uh, just show up in a better state of mind. I was at Dr. Stella's house, a new friend, and it feels like somebody that I've known my whole life and I just feel so grateful to meet these kinds of women online through my golf community. It's crazy. So I'm in Austria playing golf. I mean, you're living the dream. You're living the life, Kerry. We all want to be around the world playing golf and that's what you get to do. But before we get into your online golf community and how amazing that is, can you maybe first of all, tell us um, a little bit about where you're from? Sure. I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia. That's where I live. But I grew up in a town five hours from there uh, in New Brunswick called Bathurst, New Brunswick. And I first started playing golf in that beautiful little town in a beautiful golf community at a golf course called Gowan Bray. What age were you when golf first became a thing in your life? Was it family that kickstarted this view or was it you yourself? So I'm the baby of five and I'm quite a bit younger than my older siblings. And so when I was growing up, they were all at the golf course doing, I don't know what, but I was quite annoyed that I couldn't go there until what they told me, I couldn't go until I was nine. So I feel like when I was nine, I feel like I literally bashed the walls down, <laughs> the doors down and thought, okay, I've made it. I'm gonna stay here forever. And I've taken it to the next level. It's true. I've been welcome here now and I'm not going back. And it's really truly how I've led my life through golf. I always felt like I finally am here I'm old enough to be here and I love being here and I've loved every minute of being part of golf ever since I was nine years old, I swear. Look, isn't that amazing? I mean, you, you're you painting a fabulous picture, Kerry, but we all know that golf is is can be tough and can be quite frustrating. I mean, at the start, did you, did you find that? Well, um, I think it was just so young that we went into clinics and we hung out with friends and we made friends and tournaments was the same idea. We just, that's what we did. And so I can't remember, as you were telling me, you're in this tournament for your first time. I can't remember it being nothing more than what we did on weekends, what we we jump on a bus and go travel like an hour away. And it was just something our parents got rid of us doing. And I just remember doing it from a young, young age, and it just was always a part of my life. So yes, I know golf is hard for everybody that's listening out there. I hear you, and I that's why I support, started a you know, community for women online, because I know how hard golf can be. You can be good one day and trash the next day. It's so hard to bounce back. So you started at the age of nine. When did you realize, realize I'm actually kind of good at this, when did the golf get a bit serious for you? Well, I think it's when I won my first teddy bear at uh, when I was about 12 years old. I won a gunned polar bear and I thought, well, this is kind of fun winning, you know, things that my family would never have bought me. And I remember when I was 16, I won a TV and I took that TV and slapped that in my room and I thought I was King Tut. And I thought, geez, if this is a way, a means to get things or to get places. When I realized that I was going on a trip to Disneyland because I was one of the top few girls in my area, I just, I, I got a glimpse of what golf could give me in life, which was travel away from home, away from parents, like independence. I was, I was set like, so it started with, you know, the little teddy bear and then the prizes and then the fun and then just, when I made the first team when I was a junior and I made the New Brunswick golf team, 
I was, we set off to go to Newfoundland on a, on a plane. And I was like, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Bye mom. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Um, sorry, you mentioned the, the prizes there, like the televisions, the teddies. And was this trip to Disneyland a prize, Kerry? Because no. So I won the prizes and then got a little bit further into like being on the team and then going to the nationals. And when I got picked, you know, as the top three girls in the New Brunswick area, that's how we got the the trip to Disneyland. And I remember I was, I don't know, 17 and I saw my first palm tree and I thought, look, this is giving me wings. Golf is giving me wings. I mean, because I, I thought you were going to say the trip to Disneyland was a prize. I'm like, there's going to be juniors here in Ireland going what's going on here in Ireland we don't get any trips to Disneyland we get like nothing so um... no, that, that took me well seven years of like you know playing in tournaments and working at it and loving it and finally someone recognized the fact that you know the top three needed to go you know train in the winter time so that was kind of a novelty and you're also a golf pro Kerry so I was a part of the PGA uh of my Canadian area for 25 years and I left that um, you know union you could call it and I just kind of went out on my own as a golf influencer because I found myself at a cross in the roads and I decided you know I was just going to go out and start my own business so I started a fitness business online which after bicep blow off Friday, the ladies were like, you do golf, don't you? Can we talk about golf for a second? And there I am in my, you know, muscle tank top and the lady all fired up from bicep blow off Friday. I'm like, you guys want to talk about golf, do you? And they're like, yeah. And so I got all fired up talking about golf. And then I started online golf teaching because I could do, you know, small little 20 minute classes and teach all year round. So I basically teach from January through till June when it's snowing outside in Canada in my garage. And I do my fitness in my garage. And I've connected with women all over the world that want to, you know, get fit, play golf and find a way to practice while it's snowing and get stronger in the off season so we can pounce, you know, and get ready to play some good golf that summer. So it's turned into a, this year's going to be my five year, um, anniversary since COVID hit it kind of started at COVID everything fell apart in COVID and we built it back up one person at a time but it's uh now a company called Get Vertical which um I have about 15 women that work with me doing nutrition meditation spin yoga all kinds of things and it's a legit company that I'm so proud of no, fair play to you. It sounds a ma like an, a massive achievement. Can you tell us about like the community itself and like the women that are on there? What are they like? And is it all just one big like empowerment place that you can go and just enjoy being a woman with other women? Pretty much. It's women. From It started with my cousin and my sister and, my you know, all the people that I knew during COVID. But then it grew to, you know, people in the Maritimes, people all over Canada, people in the US, people in, I have two from Ireland, two members from Ireland. Yeah. that work with me. You know, it's seven o'clock in Halifax, but it's 11 o'clock here. And the two ladies pop in. Those two ladies that I've been working out with for about a year and a year and a half, both of them came to find me on a golf course that I was playing last week. So it's a group of women that empower each other and me too. I'm somehow got gifted the appointment of, you know, I started it. So I'm the leader, but I often say, I don't know who's pushing who anymore, but the wave of energy up inside this community is one where we look after each other. If there's an entrepreneur in the group, I help and promote their businesses uh, actually, there was three women, women from Ireland that came to meet me and probably seven others that have been following me online that love what I do and have offered for me to come play, stay, visit with them. Ireland has, they wrap their arms right around me and I feel like I could come back and almost see, uh, we saw the West side. I'd love to come back and maybe do the East side and really kind of you know make an effort to visit on the other side because it's so huge I had no clue 
It's it's so big but so small at the same time. You did visit here. You were here last week. So come on, give us a little insight. Where did you go? What was the golf clubs? Give us give us the tea. Okay. The weather, the weather was unbelievable. Okay. You're lucky. You're lucky. You're lucky. We had three of the most fabulous days that Ireland has seen and people were telling me a year. Yeah, no, you're lucky. You're lucky. It was incredible. So we knew how we could almost never repeat this because the weather was unbelievable. So we went to Donegal the first day. Help me pronounce them if I'm doing them wrong. Donegal, yeah. Well done. And uh, it was beautiful. Uh, view of the beach. Uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Then, you know, the one that won my heart because the um, service was what I call stand up and raise you higher. Okay. That Ennis Crone and the love of people was unmatched. And so therefore I have to mention Keith, he was my favorite GM that came out to greet me with a great big smile. And they were all so happy and you could tell to have us there. We had the most fabulous day. Um, we're never treated more royally ever. And so Innes Crone has got my heart uh, the golf course was gorgeous, difficult, fun. And then County Sligo, it was, have you played there? Not yet. Okay. It is amazing. It is 360 lighthouse, mountains, beach everywhere, gorgeous views in a 360. Yeah. <laughs> it was incredible. So those three courses, after we played Donegal, I was like, it can't get any better than this, ladies. Be careful. The second day in his crone. Okay, ladies, it's not going to get any better. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ross's point, I was like, that was a slam dunk. Those three courses on the ocean like that. Wow. We we do have some stunning golf courses. And, and like, you've only seen like a, the tiniest, tiniest pick of them. So, I mean... After you've been here, Karen, now have you plans to come back? Are, wait, like, are you going to come back soon? So I'm from there. So my heart, there's a yearning to want to come back for sure. There are no plans yet. Um, so the door is always open and we'll see what uh, is supposed to be manifested because I'm really riding the wave of, you know, do what you love, find people that you love to do it with. Um, look for opportunities and where the opportunities knock if your heart says go baby yeah. then you know so there's no plans yet but it was unbelievable we uh did sleeve league also we hiked it have you done that please say yes oh my god me and hiking um let's move on now let's <laughs> let's move on from this question this i'm asking you the question scary <laughs> <laughs> see I do you know what I think when you're from a country like you probably take you know we probably like don't take advantage of things enough we're like ah it's on our doorsteps because we we go away and we do all the things in all these other countries but we probably don't make the most of what's on our doorstep at all we probably as Irish people I can say that it's okay there's still time you're like you got lots of time love bug <laughs> I love how you're selling my own country to me. And I'm like, no, I have to go hike now. Play this golf course. I'm play that golf course. Um, Carrie, can you tell us if there's someone listening here now and they're interested in any way of getting in touch with you or what you do? And they, I, I'm sure they're going to love the sound of you. They're going to love everything about you. You can already tell. I already know I'm going to be getting messages about how lovely you are. But how can people reach out to you? And maybe like, is it about joining your community or me even talking about what you do? So um, I'm on Instagram, like nobody's business with all my stories. It's I do golf travel. This is what I love. So um, Instagram at Carrie Mar Golf and also Facebook, TikTok, all of it. It's the replica of Instagram. But my community, which I just want, you know, any woman to say, please, if you want support, if you want a place to, you know, talk about you know, understanding anything about golf, this is your your safe place. I call myself your online friendly neighborhood golf pro. 
and I mean it, when people join my community, what I want them to do is feel seen, heard, loved. And I flip over backwards for these women and then they do for other women that join the group as well. So it's a wonderful online golf community. You can just do golf. You can join just the fitness. You can do both um, at carrymar.com. Come for a month when you need it the most, maybe mid-February, come back. My, many people come and go. They do something different all summer long. I say, go do the things that you need to do and come back in November. If that's, It's a monthly subscription. And as a golf pro, I do a live online uh, check-in twice a week. And it's drills that you can use to get better. So what I realized is that people are practicing. They don't even know what. They don't even know how to get better. I know because I've been there. So I have the kind of the steps to go, okay, so you're a newbie. We had a little golfer who came with us, not little, she's 51, but she was a new golfer and she came with us on this trip and she named herself baby golfer, cute blue eyes, Melissa from California. And she was fairly new at golf, but she felt, you know, supported in this group. And so new golfers and even advanced golfers can find a place to be in this community. And that's what I'm most proud of. If you're a golf geek, come hang out. You're going to love it. CarrieMar.com, pretty much. No, fabulous. And we will be able to tag you in the episode that people can find you the easy way. That's how they can do it, Kerry. Um, before we let you go, you like we have spoken about you coming to Ireland, but like you have part of you is Irish now, Kerry. We're not letting you get away. Like you... You are technically from here. So tell everybody what county your relation is from. Okay. So my mother's Scottish and my dad is from County Tipperary, uh, yeah. a town called Tippermore. And his name is Robert Marr. And I'm going to mention this not because it's sad, because I'm celebrating his life. He passed away last year and there's no sadness in this at all because he was 94 and he lived the most joyous, happy you know, laughing life. And I want to say it to remember him. And I felt, you know, just being there with all the, you know, kindness of the humans. I get it, dad. Like I get what you're all about because he was a sweet, kind, generous, open the door kind of a house is what we lived in. And the people in Ireland were so loving. Everybody we spoke to were like, come on, would you like to come in? Could we talk longer to you? Nobody brushed us off everybody was lovely and there I get it dad and I get you know where his roots are from and it was an honor to just I can't believe at 51 it was my first time there but I, it will never be forgotten and it's like solid as a rock even more Ireland wow yeah you, you need to come back soon if I knew you were here now I'd have gone I met you myself to be honest Kerry before I let you go you have um a lovely jumper on you I mean is this merch is this is this just cool golf gear that we need to get what boom girls golf too <laughs> yes, yes I can <laughs> yeah so I have a sweatshirt and a few other things you know what the new one I can't even tell you my newest idea because it came from Ireland and I can't even tell you what it is, but I do have some merch and I have a new T-shirt with a new Irish saying that whenever the ladies would lose, I'll give you a hint. Whenever they'd lose a golf ball, we left and every time we'd take a picture, it was no longer cheese. It was, I'll leave you hanging. Okay. Oh my God. So we're not, <laughs> we're not getting the exclusive. No, we're not getting this. <laughs> Kerry, we'll have to, this watch. This is such a tease. We're all going to be keeping a close eye now and see what's the latest merch. But I must say, a fine Tipperary woman because that is, that name, Mar, is like such a Tipperary name as well. There are so many Mars and we'd say Maher here in Tipperary, but you, like, it's Mar, Maher, whatever. But you are a Tipperary woman at heart and it was so nice to have you in the podcast and make sure the next time you're in Ireland to definitely reach out because I'm sure there'll be a community of women mad for us all to get in the golf course together. Awesome. Thanks for having me on and you continue playing some lots of golf. Okay. I will. I mean, I'll be reaching out for the tips and the fit, even the fitness videos for golf. I think that's, that's intriguing me the most. My I dare you for month. <laughs> Kerry, thank you so much for chatting to you. Go in and enjoy your golf in Austria. Okay. Thanks buddy. Nice to meet you. 
Thanks so much. It is now time for the news section. We'll start with the DP World Tour. It was a tied 10 finish for Tom McKibben at the BMW PGA in Wentworth. Uh, this pushes Tom into position for one of those top 10 PGA Tour cards available uh, on the DP World Tour players with seven events remaining. Uh, Rory McIlroy uh, finished second, unfortunately, heartbreak in the uh, playoff as well, burning the two playoff holes and still losing out to Billy Horschel uh, with an eagle. Uh, good finishes for Shane and Park also, so well done there to all involved. Uh, on the Challenge Tour, it was a fifth place finish for Connor Purcell at the Italian Challenge. Uh, and it's pushed him back up the tent on the race to, to Mallorca with five events remaining. Uh, the top 10, 20 at the conclusion of the season will earn DP World Tour cards. Uh, the tour is in Switzerland this week with Connor, Gary Hurley, Dermot McRoy and John Murphy all in action. On the Ladies European Tour, it was a tied 18 finish for Lauren Walsh at the La Celia Open with Sarah Byrne finishing tied 41st. Uh, Olivia Mahaffey missed the cut, unfortunately. Uh, Lacoste Ladies Open to France this week is on with Lauren and Sarah in action again. Uh, on the LET Access Series, it was tied 18 to finish last week for Annabelle Wilson at the Laveau Ladies Open, uh, and the tour is off this week. Uh, the Clutch Pro Tour was a tour final this week with a number of Irish players, uh, including Alex Maguire, in action. Uh, the event began on Tuesday with John Ross Gilbreth, the leader, after round one. On the DP World Tour as well, Q School is currently uh, or is taking place this week uh, with a number of Irish players uh, in action across two venues. Uh, in Hor- Horsens, uh, the top 18 in ties will advance and uh, Liam Nolan, Mark Power, Max Kennedy and David Kitt all in that field. Uh, and then the Golf de la Repose, uh, the top 21 in ties will advance there. Uh, there was a delayed start yesterday or on Tuesday sorry, to Clorse Flooding. Uh, but Ronan Mullaney, Conor O'Rourke and Jack Madden, Tim Rice are all in the field. So keep up to date uh, on social media and Golf Ireland for that. Um, and then finally, there was interclub action this week with the Flow Gas, Irish Mix Foursomes and Irish Mix Four Ball taking place. Uh, the semi-finals begin this morning uh, with Ackle Island against Malahide and Fermoy against Millicent in the Flow Gas Irish Mix Foursomes. Uh, in the Mixed Four Ball, it is Castlebar against Beaver Park uh, and Woodstock against Port Leash. Uh, that is sums up our news for this week we thank you so much for listening as always we hope you enjoyed our conversation this week and we will see you all again next week